just a wake uh -huh. I need loans, break no break I am chosen, I am great After that, boy, I need space, boy, I need space I need space, I want space I want space, I want space Hey, hey, my man. We asked that wear face coverings as well. What's your name, man? Remember to practice social distancing. What's your name, bro? Wash your hands What's your name, bro? Thomas, Thomas. Thomas nice to meet you. Right. My name's Yosef, man. You, you, uh, you ever heard that you was an Israelite? Uh, you ever heard that she was an Israelite? Always, you never heard that she was an Israelite. So, you, you for, for worked a job, filled out a job application. If on that job application it says, what's your racial nationality, what would you put there? Well, ain't that much, right. So, so what would you put? One of them. Right. Which one would you put? Sometime I don't put nothing. Right. But which one do we, as a race, identify as? So African American. African American, yeah. black, right? So where is that? Where do you see yourself on this sound, right? Uh -huh. Because the Bible says that God calls us something different than what the world knows us as. The world knows us as African Americans or American black. But the Bible says that you come from the tribe of Judah. That's right. Same tribe that Christ came from, right? So I'm gonna show you what happened to us that we now call ourselves black, African-American, Negroes, diggers, uh, what's enough, uh, Asiatic black man. I, I don't even know what that means, but that's what we call Baptist, which is a denomination, not a religion. I mean, not a, a nationality, right? Give me Deuteronomy 15 chapter. I'm gonna show you what happened because this Bible is not a every man's book. Right. It's not a every man's book. It's a our book, right? And we become so detached from it. Now, you know the main thing that we hear our people say about this book? That's the white man's book. That's right. You know why? Because the white man came and said that this is Jesus. But that's not in the Bible. The most dangerous thing that a black man can do today is not read. Remember, hundreds of years ago, they would kill us for learning how to read. Why? If there was something that we weren't supposed to read, unless we found out who we were, right? Otherwise, what's the reason to not let somebody read something? How harmless is reading? This is why reading was so illegal when we were put into slavery. Right. Deuteronomy 20, sorry, verse uh, 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Read what's your name, up. sis? Sis, what's your name? Drell. Drell? My name Yosef, sis. You ever heard you was an Israelite? No. Okay, so we got Thomas, Thomas and Drell, right? Thomas and Drell, right? So the Bible calls us Israelites. Not black people, not uh, Hispanics, Native Americans. Israelites. And this is how we know that we're the Israelites. Read. Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Read. But it shall come to pass... If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, Three. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So y'all both familiar with the story of Moses and the Israelites, let my people go, right? What, uh, what was their status in society during the time of the Egyptians? What were they, status-wise? They... They were slaves, right? You familiar with that story, right? They were slaves. Deuteronomy, Moses is leading the children of Israel out of slavery, but he's given them their true heritage, right? That heritage was laws, statutes, and commandments, That's not right. religion, like Christian church teaches you. Laws to govern yourself by, right? Because God knows his people that we are naturally a lawless people. So he said, if you do keep these laws, statutes, and commandments, like thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not kill. Brothers, don't shave your head or shave your face. Sisters, don't put on pants. These are laws. Brothers, don't put on dresses. Right? If you keep these laws, you will be great and above all people. Right. But if you break these laws, something was going to happen to you, meaning you will be cursed. Right? Now, read that bottom part. You'll be cursed. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right. So if we didn't keep the commandments, the Israelites would be cursed. Now I'm going to read some curses to you, and I want you to pay attention to these signs, and you tell me who did this befall. Because there's a people today calling themselves Jews, right? So these things about the Jews should fit them, right? Right or wrong, right? So read verse uh, 37. Remember, we call each other black, African-American, Negroes, niggas, right? But I can ask five different black people, what's your race? You might say, I'm a black woman. He might say, I'm an African-American man. You might say, I'm a, I'm a nigger. Right? Same race of people, but we all say something different about our race. 
Right? Why? What curse befell us that we don't know now? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 37. Read. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. Do you know what it means to become a proverb and an astonishment? Look at these niggas over here. They don't know how to act right. Another world star hip hop video involving these crazy niggas. That's an astonishment. A proverb is uh, a wise saying like, if you want to hide anything from a Negro, put it away. In a book, why? Because Negroes hate to read. That's a proverb, a wise saying that all nations of people say about us. You know what a byword is? African-American, Negro, and as always, thank uh, you for shopping at black person, anything outside of the name that God gave you himself. Something that, ev uh, like a, uh, something that everybody identifies you with, but what you're truly called. That's what a byword is. So one curse that will befall the Israelites is their heritage will be stripped from them. Go back to Jeremiah 17 and 4. And I'm going to show you this in the Bible. We're reading the things that happened to the Jews. Did the Jews lose their identity? The fake, well, I call them fake Jews because that's what the Bible calls them. Right. But did the Jewish people forget that they were Jews and call themselves something different? Right, so the Bible said this will happen to the Jews. What else will happen to the Jews? We went over this earlier with you. And now for the sisters and the other brother, read. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. Read. And thou, even thyself, and you, even you, read, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. What people on the planet discontinue from their heritage? Look it up. You know what encompasses a heritage? Where you come from. What you were naturally called. Right. What kings and princesses and queens did you have ruling at one time? What dignitaries do you come from? What mighty inventions did you create? Uh, what, what customs do you keep? How do you dance? How do you dress? What holidays do you celebrate? Do our people know any of that? No. Our people have discontinued from our heritage. Right? That's what the Bible said what happened to the Jews. The Jewish people didn't discontinue from their heritage. Only my people did. Read. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies uh -huh. in the land which thou knowest not. And on top of forgetting your heritage, you will be made to serve people who hate you in a land you never knew of. Right. Who does that sound like? What people was forced to come to a land that they did not know about and serve people who hated them. Who did that sound like? That sound like Jewish people over there? That sound like Abraham Hoswich? Right, that sound like typical me and you. Typical black man, black woman, Hispanic, Native American man and woman in the ghettos of America. Right. Right? Let's get another curse. Deuteronomy 28. Watch this. I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hold on, sis. One more, one more, one more curse before we go. One more before we go. Get 68. Watch this, sis. Cause don't take my word for it. Do your own research. The Bible talks about us. Nobody else. This this should prove it. Read Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight and verse sixty-eight. And the Lord, oh, I'm sorry. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt means bondage. Bondage means slavery. Get get the point real quick, just to prove that. Bondage, Egypt, slavery. It all means the same thing because the land that the Israelites were in slavery to was called Mizraim or the land of Ham, but God called it Egypt. Why? Read Deuteronomy chapter five. In verse 6, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt uh -huh. from the house of bondage. Or house of slavery. That's what Egypt means. House of bondage. The place where you were in slavery to, right? So when we read in Deuteronomy 28 chapter and 68 verse, one curse that will befall the Israelites is they will go into Egypt or slavery. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Into slavery again. With ships. With what? With ships. This is the Bible. King James Bible, same Bible that your mom, your dad, same Bible that's in Creflo's Christian church and everything. Well, maybe not his church no more. They got NIVs and stuff now where they take things like this out lest you find out that you're these people. Right. So the Bible said that the Israelites were going through slavery on slave ships, right? Like the transatlantic slave trade. That's history, right? We can all agree that this actually happened, right? And we're reading about this in the Bible. Read. <laughs> By the way whereof I spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning your heritage you will not see again. Your homeland you will not see again. You will utterly be made to forget everything about who you truly are. Read. And there. And there. Once you get off of these ships. Ye shall be sold. You'll be what? Sold. 
Man, we, where, where do we live? What state are we in? Virginia. What, what's the history of Virginia? Oh, you know. Chaco Bottom, yeah. Oxen Block, you know Slave Trail, slow, right? Uh, the Bible you says the Israelites, the Jews, once they got off those slave ships, they would be sold, right? shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen, and slave men, like you are, and bond women, and slave women, like you are, right? and no man shall buy you, meaning redeem or save you from this captivity or slavery. Many have tried. Martin Luther King tried. What happened to him? They killed him. Malcolm X tried. What happened to him? They killed him. Uh, Marcus Garvey, Nat Turner, Gabriel Prosser, Denmark Bissey, just to name a few. And then when Obama got elected, we thought it was over until they started killing us in the streets again. Right? This place will never love us. This place will never accept us because we weren't brought over here to be accepted by this place. We were brought over here to be punished by our God that said, you disobeyed my commandments that I gave you, my sons and daughters, because you are, in fact, the only sons and daughters of God. Not everybody. Christianity teaches that God loves everybody, but you will not find that in the Bible. And if you, and if you, you go to the famous scripture that people say, John 3, 16, we can explain that. Matter of fact, let's explain that. Because that's where a lot of people go to explain God loves everybody. So let's explain John 3.16 in its proper context. Read what you got, John 3.16. The book of John, chapter 3 and verse 16. Read it out. For God so loved the world. There's that word, the world. Hold on, sis. God so loved the world. Read. That he gave his only begotten son, uh -huh. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Uh -huh but have everlasting life. That whosoever, right? That sounds like everybody, right? Let me ask you a question, sis. People in Christianity days, and a lot of our people quote John 3 16 to say that God loves everybody, right? What does John 3 and 14 say? I'm gonna be honest, I don't know. Oh, right. that, that's a fair answer, sis. That's a honest answer. Most of our people won't say that. Most of our people, we're so accustomed to being downtrodden and on the bottom that we have to uh, esteem ourselves as if we know something that we don't know. But there's nothing wrong with I don't know. That's being born again. You know what children do when they don't know something? Baby girl, that's, that's, uh, oh, my, my daughter might say, Daddy, that's blue. No, baby girl, that's green. You know what she's not going to do like the typical black man or woman do? Buck up and tell me, you stupid, that is blue. Right. That's what we do. We stubborn, we ignorant. A child will, oh, I didn't know that. Thank you, Daddy. That is green. Right. That's why Christ said, be born again like a little child. Children don't buck up and fight back when someone teaches them something. Only stubborn ass grown-ups do. That's why Christ said, be born again and become as a little child, meaning humble yourself. Everything that you taught, were taught and know was taught to you by the people that hate you, like John 3, 16. So let's get John 3 and 14, read. John chapter three and verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Uh -huh. Right, so the scriptures say that the same way Moses was lifted up in the wilderness, Christ would be lifted up. What history is he referencing? What history is he referencing? Give me that in Numbers. Numbers, uh, what is it, 21? Numbers 21, started verse 6. What history is Christ referencing that says, as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. Right? That all that believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Read what you got. The book of Numbers, chapter 21 and verse 6. A hey, sis. Come learn about your nationality. What's your race? According to the Bible, what does God call you? Right. What does God call you? Do you know? Read what you got. Verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Read. And they bit the people. Read. And much people of Israel died. And much people of who? Of Israel died. Right. So we're talking about Israel. The Israelites, right? In Numbers. Fiery serpents. What history happened that is being referenced in John, the third chapter in the 16th verse? Read. Verse 7. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent. Take you one of these serpents like we referenced in John 3 and 16, and do what? And set it upon a pole. And lift it up. Read. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, 
when he looketh upon it shall live. And whosoever looketh upon it shall be saved. Who were the people in the wilderness that Moses took a serpent, put it on a stick, and raised it up? Who were those people? The Israelites. Right. And, and it was a similar to of what would happen to Christ on behalf of the Israelites. Matthew 15, 24. Let's prove that further, that Christ didn't come for everybody. It is a bad misconception and a lie that Christianity, that white man Christianity teaches. That God came for everybody, that Jesus the Christ came for everybody, and now everybody can be saved, even the people that hang you till this very day. Even the people that beat you till this very day. The people that enslave you till this very day. Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Of who? Of Israel. So Christ said out of his own mouth that I'm not sent to nobody but the children of Israel. So where do we get everybody? Where do we get Christ died for everybody. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.